Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and in today's lesson we're going to go over potential relays versus current relays. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. In today's lesson we're going to be going over the key differences between potential relays versus current relays. We're also going to go over a few wiring diagrams and explain how each of them work. In front of us here we have our potential relay and the first thing that we're going to notice is that the potential relay is always going to be larger than the current relay and at the same time the potential relay is mounted away from the compressor. You're most likely going to find this inside your control panel as it's a different story for your current relay. In front of us is the current relay and it is significantly smaller than the potential relay. You will notice that the coil is exposed for your current relay as for your potential relay it is enclosed in the plastic housing. Two things you will notice here is that there are two female connections on the relay itself and that is because of how this relay is mounted. In front of us is a compressor and specifically our three terminals are common start and run and what's interesting about the current relay is that you're going to find this mounted directly onto your terminals, specifically your start and run winding. Here we can see our current relay mounted directly onto the compressor. If so far you're enjoying this video, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as we come out with new videos every week. Don't forget to share with your friends, and let's continue. The next key difference between the potential relay and the current relay is that the potential relay is made up of a high resistance coil and the current relay is made of a low resistance coil. Since our current relay is made up of a low resistance coil, our coil is actually larger in diameter and has fewer turns compared to the potential relay. Pay attention to the thickness of this wire. I opened up our potential relay and this is the inside. Here is our coil. Since we have a high resistance coil, you can see the copper strands are much thinner. They're smaller and there are many more turns. So for the potential relay, we have a high resistance coil, smaller diameter with more turns compared to your current relay, which is a low resistance coil, which has a larger diameter and fewer turns. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two coils. As you can see, it is quite a difference. I did make a separate video on each of these relays. And if you're interested in further detail in each of these relays, I will leave a video link in this video's description on each of them. The next biggest difference between the two is that our potential relay has normally closed contacts and our current relay has normally open contacts. These work completely different from each other and they are quite different than your standard general purpose relay. Next, we're gonna go over two diagrams. Here we have a wiring diagram for our potential relay and the next one is gonna be for our current relay. Let's go over how this works. So in between our dotted lines is our potential relay. We have three points on our relay, five, two, and one. It also has a nickname of a 521 relay. The only thing that's not labeled here is this point right here, which is going to be our 5 terminal. Here's our 2 and here's our 1. Between 5 and 2, we have our coil, specifically our high resistance coil. And then between 2 and 1, we have our normally closed contacts. Let's go over what we have here. Here's line 1 line two. Power is going to come in. We have a set of normally open contacts here and this is labeled as cycling control. This can be our thermostat. So once this calls for cooling, these contacts will close and allow power to pass through. The next thing we're going to go through is our overload. This is a thermal overload. So if our compressor overheats, this will open and kill the distribution of power to a compressor to save it. As power passes by, power is going to distribute. So it's going to go through this way. Well, it's going to distribute, of course, but it's going to pass through here. 
and it's going to energize our relay coil. So power is going to come in, distribute, go through our relay coil. And since we have a normally closed set of contacts, you know, this is going to continue to pass through. So power is going to go through the rod winding, start winding, make its way out and basically distribute everywhere. What's going to happen is that our compressor is going to start up, the amps are going to go up, and once the motor reaches a certain speed, we're going to have something known as back EMF or counter EMF. EMF stands for electromotive force. And due to this, what's going to happen is that these contacts are actually going to open. And what that does is essentially take the star capacitor out of our circuit as it already did its job and started our compressor. So pretty much power goes through the coil and it completes the circuit. It goes through our run winding, our start winding. And once the motor reaches up to speed, that back EMF is going to open these contacts and we're pretty much just going to run off the start winding. So I'm going to go like this and that's it. We have a running compressor. Just a second heads up regarding back EMF and other terms and a more detailed video on the potential relay along with the current relay. I did make videos on them separately and those videos will be in this video's description. Next here we have a wiring diagram for our current relay. Inside here is our current relay. This is going to be our coil. And of course we have our normally open contacts opposed to our potential relay which had the normally closed contacts. So let's just go over what we have here. Here we have line one. Here we have line two. So power will come in and then we have a few terminals here on our current relay. L which is our line and that is where power is always going to enter from. And between L and M is our coil. Remember, this is our low resistance coil, which has a thicker diameter. So between L and M is our coil. M stands for main winding, which is actually our run winding as we pass through this is our compressor. This is our run winding. So M is actually our run winding, but it's always labeled as that and our main winding. Here we have a star capacitor. And the thing is, this current relay could have different variations. You can have one, two, and even three other points to this. But the takeaway here and what is universal is that is that you're always going to have a L, M, and S, our low resistance coil, and a set of normally open contacts. So Let's just follow through here. Power comes in through L, pass through the coil into M, main winding, which is really our run winding. And then here's our compressor, our common winding, then comes out, passes through our thermal overload. Here, um, what actually happens is that the power comes in and it distributes. So it goes through here and at the same time it tries to go through here, but this star cap won't be in play until these contacts close so it can pass through the start winding and so forth. So let's go over how this operates. So power comes in through L1 and it goes try to distribute as far as this, this will stop right here. So power is going to come in, go into L, pass through our coil and then into our main winding, which is our run winding. So the electricity is going to pass through our winding and into our common winding, pass through our overload and out. And what's going to happen here is we're going to have something called locked rotor. And this is going to be a very large increase in current and amperage. So what's going to happen is that due to this large increase, we're going to create a magnetic field across this coil and with that magnetic field these contacts will close so now as this is passing through here now that these contacts closed our start capacitor is in the circuit 
passes through the start winding and completes the circuit. So now we have power being distributed through the compressor. And once this compressor reaches about three fourths of its speed, what's gonna happen is that our amperage is gonna go down, the current is gonna go down. And when the current goes down, we're not gonna have enough of an electric field to keep these contacts closed. So this opens and takes our start cap out of the circuit and essentially our start winding. So then we're just running through our main winding or our run winding and there you go you have a running compressor if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as they come out with new videos every week and i'll catch you all next time